Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about the helical spring terminology. So let's start it. First term is the wire diameter of spring. So it is denoted by small d. So it is the diameter of coil of a spring. So this is nothing but the coil of a spring which you can see in this drawing. So the wire diameter is the diameter of coil of a spring which is denoted by small d over here. So it is also shown in this image that is the wire diameter of the coil. Next term is the outside diameter of the spring coil. So it is the width of your spring measured from outside of the coil. If we measure the width of the spring from outside of the coil then it is the outer diameter of the spring coil. It is denoted by d o. Next is the inside dia of a spring coil. Again it is the width of the hole at the center of the coil. Width of the hole at the center of the coil is nothing but the inner diameter of a spring coil which is denoted by d i. Next term is the mean coil diameter. So mean coil diameter it is the average of inner diameter and outer diameter of a spring. So the average of inner diameter and outer diameter is nothing but the mean coil diameter. So it is the center to center distance. So mean coil diameter is equal to inner diameter plus outer diameter divided by 2. Next term is the spring index. So spring index is very important term in spring terminology. So spring index is defined as it is the ratio of mean coil diameter that is the capital D to wire diameter that is a small d. So this spring index may vary from 4 to 12. So this spring index actually indicates the sharpness of curvature of coil. Next term is the helix angle of a spring. So here you can see there is a spring axis and a line is drawn perpendicular to the spring axis and there is a axis of a coil of a spring. Now what is the helical helix angle of a spring? So helix angle of a spring it is nothing but the angle made by the coil axis. So this is nothing but the coil axis and a line perpendicular to the axis of the spring. So a line which is drawn perpendicular to the axis of the spring that angle is nothing but the helix angle of the spring. Next term that is the free length. So free length of the helical spring is the length of the spring in unloaded or free condition means when spring is in free state or no load is acting on the spring then that length is called as free length of the spring. Next is the compressed length of the spring. Now it is defined as the axial length of the spring. So it is measured axially. Axial length of the spring which is subjected to maximum compressive force. So a maximum load is applied on the spring and the axial distance between the spring is nothing but the compressed length. So during the compressed length there is still a gap between the coils. Next is the solid length. Now see what is the solid length. When all the coil of the springs are compressed such that they come in contact with each other then length of the spring is said to be solid length. Now see here each coils are touching each other. Coils are in contact with each other. So in solid length there is no further compression of the coils of a spring. So this is called as solid length. So solid length is given by the equation nt into d. nt is nothing but total number of coils and d is the wire diameter. 
so that will give you the solid length of the spring next equation is the pitch of a coil so it is the axial distance between adjacent coil when spring is in a free state okay so here you can see it is the axial distance between the adjacent coils so if we measure the axial distance between the adjacent coil when spring is in free state means there is no load acting on the spring then we can measure the pitch of the coil so pitch of the coil is the distance between the adjacent coils okay so pitch of the coil is given by free length divided by nt minus 1 where nt is the total number of coils now next is 11th that is the stiffness of a spring or spring rate so stiffness of a spring is what stiffness of a spring is nothing but force required to produce unit deflection okay a force required to produce the unit deflection is nothing but the stiffness of a spring or spring rate so it is given by the equation P upon del so stiffness of a spring is nothing but in Newton per mm now let us see example to understand this stiffness of a spring now see this example initially spring is in unloaded condition that is a free length now suppose 10 kg kilogram load is applied on this spring now spring will deflect through a distance of 20 mm means here spring is getting compressed by a distance of 20 mm now k is nothing but the spring rate which is nothing but load per unit deflection so here load is 10 kg and deflection that is taking place is 20 mm so we'll get the result 0.5 kg per mm is the spring rate in this case now next active and inactive coils of a spring now here active coils are those coils which deflect under the action of external force while inactive coils are those coil which does not deflect under the action of external force so inactive coils are generally present at the end of the coils so this is nothing but the inactive coil which are present at the end of the coils so they are what two in number and these are nothing but the active coil one two and three so they are present at the after the inactive coils okay so active coils will contribute to the spring action okay so this is all about the spring terminology hope you like this video thank you for watching